Hello and welcome to a very special episode of How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to cover a technique called dipping. Now dipping is an incredibly effective method for painting large amounts of infantry figures very very quickly and it has the bonus that it normally keeps them pretty well protected too. So what is dip? There are a few misconceptions about how hard this is to use. It just requires a little bit more preparation and the right tools to get you started. Once you've got those all together, you'll find that you'll be churning out models very, very quickly. So dip. A few years ago, somebody figured out that it was possible to both shade and varnish a miniature at the same time by using uh, wood stain, like wood varnish, the same sort of stuff that you would put on your fence. And it wasn't long before somebody cottoned on and figured, what if? Now, hear me out, we actually color match this to certain products. Now, out there, you can still go ahead and find online uh, recipes for dip, you know, from wood varnish. They are still out there. If you want to do this the cheap way, it's entirely possible. I recommend you do check out some suggestions on where people have found the right materials for that local to them. But today, I'm going to use Army Painter Quick Shade. Now, I like this because it is color matched to the rest of their products. And I know what I'm getting when I open the tin. You know, I've thought about experimenting with some of the, the wood varnishes before, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with what I know, okay? Now, this works particularly well for metal and resin miniatures. And the reason for that is the, the sort of the thickness, the toughness of the varnish effect that we're going to get. It makes them almost indestructible. <laughs> if you've ever painted a metal miniature, you know, agonized over getting it finished, and then had it just fall over on the table and its own weight chips its paint job, what a pain. Now, quick Shade, this will go some way to helping mitigate that. I've never had anything with chi uh, Quick Shade chip before. Uh, and the same too with resin miniatures. So I've got here today, this little fella here. This is one of Anvil Miniatures uh, Regiment's range. And you can see I've just put all of his base coats on. So this is very, very simple. This is the point where I would normally go ahead and give him an Agrax Earthshade wash and then go ahead, pick out any details I wanted to later. Now, it's worth pointing out with these dips that they do tend to leave a miniature darker because rather than a normal wash or shade, these are actually going to act as a stain as well. So when you're painting with these, you want to use brighter colors than you normally would. So he's, you know, quite sharp looking there. But once he's got this stuff on, you know, he's going to look to business. So I have here a couple of tools I'm going to need to get me on my way. Enamel odorless thinner. Now this is not a water-based product. If you try and clean your brushes with water, you're going to end up with a disaster. And I think this is where some of the misconception about how hard this is to use comes from. It's not too difficult to pick up uh, odorless thinner. You know, if you've ever watched a Bob Ross episode, he's always talking about this stuff. I really like it because I work indoors and I don't want to choke myself out with anything else. Um, if you've got the ability to open a window while you're working, turps, you know, normal turpentine will work perfectly well for cleaning off your brushes. Now I've got a little bit of that odorless thinner in here, so I'm going to use that for cleaning my brushes in a moment. Then of course we've got the shade. Now the shade itself, to prep this, I like to keep it somewhere sort of warm and dry. Now, I'm lucky enough to have radiators handy, and, you know, in the winter period, I just tuck this under where the radiator sits, and it keeps it fluid. Um, it is better if it is slightly more fluid, like it'll flow better off the brush, and it will collect better on the miniature itself. So, having this a little bit warm, if you're going to prep to paint a large batch of infantry, just pop it somewhere that it'll, you know, reach room temperature. And then, a matte varnish that you like to use. When this is on the miniature... Uh, the quick shade will make it go incredibly glossy. So you want to have a matte varnish afterwards. You can also pop a little bit of this in an airbrush if you have one handy. So we'll put that aside for now as well. And let's get started with this quick shade. I've given the shade a good shake and then I'm going ahead, I've got a stick and I've given it a stir as well. You really want to make sure that this is going to flow off as much as possible. So I've got one of my raggedy old brushes because this will eventually demolish a brush. I'm going to dip a little bit of thinner just on my brush there and wipe most of it off. I just want this to the bristles to be smooth. 
grab my miniature and now this works you know almost exactly like a uh, like a typical wash would and that what you're going to do is just splatter it on the model now if i can get that to there we go so you really want to work this into the recesses anywhere like corners of helmets and what have you take your time make sure you're not missing anything it also pays not to have too much on your brush at a time because as you can see my goodness does that collect now it looks horrendous going on so i wouldn't blame you if at this point you thought i'd steered you wrong but what we're going to do is just go around and make sure everything is covered take a few seconds see look at that that is <laughs> it's horrendous but i promise okay this will look really cool when he's done so just grab yourself a little bit more when you need it and anywhere that it starts pulling too much again same as with a wash you can just draw it away with the brush you do want to try and leave it to do its own thing though because you'll find when it first goes on after a few seconds it will start to flow a little more naturally anywhere that you get little bubbles or anything like that you can quickly just jab them with your brush uh, you'll find that it's not too difficult to, to clear those away so I'm just finishing off making sure that I haven't missed anywhere and that nothing is collected too deep Ooh, I have missed his boots um, nothing is collected too deep in any recesses that you want to be visible so on this guy for example he's not wearing a, a visor so I want his eyes to be visible but I do want them shaded so I'm going to spend a little bit there make sure that's fine okay and that guy's now been dipped now you can this gets its name from literally dipping the miniatures but here's a fun little factoid being a huge strong moron like me it is possible to injure yourself while dipping because <laughs> you take the miniature you tip it upside down you're into the pot and then you flick it you know you grab hold of like a pair of pliers or something so you can dip it safely in the pot and then you're shaking the crap out of it to flick off most of the excess now i don't like to do this because first of all it's a waste and second as i said i have hurt myself while doing it <laughs> i managed to actually injure my rotator cuff on my right arm there is that fella again just so we can see how it looks when it first goes on you know that is whoo ooh, glossy and it can look like things are going to go wrong from here but don't worry because i've got something to show you that might put you at rest here's one we prepared earlier now this takes a while to dry you do want to leave these guys overnight and it's even better if you can leave them for a full 48 hours before doing anything more with them this needs some time to cure and really set to be solid as you can get it uh, what we're going to do next is to varnish over the top of it and if it, any of this is still wet or still going to run that will result in a disaster so like i said just a little bit more prep work and patience but the results speak for themselves so you know if you wanted to go ahead and just put him on a table he doesn't look too bad you could you could base him up you could have him as part of an army and like i said if you've got an exhibition or something you just need a ton of miniatures very quickly just base him and he's finished but we are going to finish him off so that he matches the rest of my army and you'll see how easy that is to do now all i need is a little bit of varnish just to mat this down and make sure he doesn't glow when he's on the table so I've got some of my Vallejo mat here and I've added a little bit of water. You want this to flow similarly to how your paint does. And then it's just a case, get into all your recesses, same as with the dip. Because if you do miss anything here, you can come back and you can touch it up with a little bit more varnish later on. You know, this is not something you need to get done all in one fell swoop. But if you do miss any spots, it will glow. So take your time, move around, get everything covered in this varnish our varnish is applied and in a few minutes that'll stop glowing before you want to do anything else with these miniatures you want to leave the varnish to dry for a good hour or so okay you really do want it to be completely dry and not just to the touch uh, if you do have a varnish that's gone touch dry 
and you don't let it dry properly, uh, doing anything over the top of it can ruin the finish that you're going to get. So, like I said, do just put this somewhere. Patience is a virtue. Let it dry for that full hour. And then, watch this, watch this, okay? Then, when that's dry, <laughs> I've been looking forward to this. I have prepped this episode so well. Watch this. That is what you end up with. Now, he's not particularly inspiring because his color scheme isn't that bright, but look what a difference that makes. You know, now I would quite happily base him and put him on the table. He would join an army. He looks fine. All I'd need to do would be to finish off a couple of minor details, and he's ready to, to go fight. You know, he's cool. Um, as I say, this works really well with metal and these resin miniatures. So what I'm going to do now is actually just go ahead and I'll do some highlights on them so you can see what a difference it makes. Now, like I said, this is really quickly, you know, I call them finished. But since I started with Zandri Dust, I'm going to highlight him with a little bit of a shabty bone along the creases of his jacket. And you'll see too that the, the wash, sorry, the dip rather, actually spends a bit of time settling along the edges of these things too. There we go, there's where the edge of my brush is. So it actually helps as a really good guide for where your highlights should go. So if you first see, for example, along the edges of the jacket here, you know, I'm just going where the wash, sorry, where the dip, I should stop calling it a wash, where that dip has settled, I'll just highlight the edge of those, those recesses and really bring out the creases on his jacket. Now I'm purposefully doing quite thick highlights uh, because as a gaming figure I want these to be visible from sort of table length away. You know, this is something I'd probably not look at doing quite the same for something I wanted to display, but for getting them on the table, you know, this is incredibly quick, very, very simple, and it looks well striking when he's finished. So I will finish him up now and I'll show you what I've got at the end when he's had his base on him. So just to summarize, it's a little bit more prep work, but the results are very, very simple. You can paint huge numbers of infantry this way very, very swiftly, and it's a great way to get some pretty cool effects that don't need a lot of work to touch them up. So hopefully something has been useful for you there, guys, and if you do have any questions, be sure just to drop them in the comments, get in touch, and I'll see what I can do for you. So as always, thank you very much for your time, and enjoy the rest of your day.